Yes. So uh, we are on to our third symposium, <laughs> which is accurately named Machine Giri. Now uh, we all know that most of us, all almost all of us, are you know part machine. We are part Android because some of us are connected to the pump, some to the loops. You know, we have all got all kinds of technical modifications here and there that we use just like that in our daily lives. So, type one diabetes is one particular field that is closely related with technology. You know, and we all know that the future of type one diabetes better management for us to lead. Almost normal lives is through technology, so that is all. All this, uh, this, this in particular symposium, the next symposium, is all about the machine giri that is related to type one diabetes. So I am going to welcome Supriya Vyas as the moderator of our next Havi, session. Havi, 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 yes, Havi Sadda. Oh, Havi Sadda is the moderator. Yes, and we have Pooja Bhave as the chair. As the chair. Hello. Hi. Hi, Chavi. Hi. Um, are we starting? Yeah, yes. sure. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Chavi. Uh, I'm a diabetic. Uh, I live in Delhi, and uh, I'm very excited uh, to moderate this session. Uh, as Indu said, uh, there's a lot of loops that are going on. Uh, lots of technology, so excited for this session. Um, I will just briefly tell you that I am based out of Delhi. I'm a marketing professional, and I also head the Delhi chapter for Blue Circle. And uh, Pooja will be uh, the chair for this. So, Pooja, if you could introduce. Sure. My name is Pooja Bhave. I'm from Mumbai. Uh, like you said, you're from the marketing industry. I'm from the advertising industry, and I also work as the head of creative strategy at Diabetes. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Perfect. Let's introduce the first speaker, Pooja. Sure. All yours. Sure. Can we have the slide, please? Okay. So uh, about this speaker, I tried to uh, select only the important parts out of all of this literature, and then I ended up realizing that they are all important points. So I'm just going to quickly go over them all. Uh, so uh, about Doctor uh, Jyoti Dev Keshav Dev. He is an MBBS and MD from Trivandrum. Um, he is the chairman of uh, Jyoti Dev's Diabetes Research Center. About this research center, uh, no, sorry, of the yeah, about this, I think um, it has a bunch of uh, organizations uh, that it's accredited for. Uh, it is uh, recognized by the center. Uh, by the IDF as the Center of Excellence in Diabetes. Uh, it is accredited for uh, RSSDI. Uh, it is uh, the Center of Excellence for Medtronic and Bush. Uh, and um, yeah, there's a number of journals that Dr. Choti Dev is affiliated with. Uh, some of them are, sorry, the screen's really far away from me. Uh, some of them uh, are the Diabetes Care, Diabetes Tech and Therapeutics, uh, the Journal for Diabetology. Then he also publishes a monthly internet-based free diabetes news uh, newsletter. Uh, and he has been doing this for the past 11 years. So like I said, the more I talk about Dr. Jyoti Dev uh, is less. Uh, so I think we should just meet him. And I would just like to add over there that uh, Dr. Jyoti is the tech guru of uh, diabetes as we all know him and he has in any tech conference you see Dr. Jyoti will be present over there and I met him for the first time at RSSDI where we did a joint talk about CGM and Dexcom so okay. any of my um, tech needs I just messaged Dr. Jyoti because he knows it all so Dr. Jyoti over to you thank you so much for agreeing to do this and um, please the dice is all yours So thank you. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes. Fine. So first of all, congratulations to uh, our own Jasiti. Uh, and Indu is also there. And thanks for the nice introduction, Pooja. Thank uh, you. And uh, Chavit. Yeah. Uh, so my duty in the next 14 to 15 minutes as interested by Jas is to uh, go through the last 
100 years of technologies in diabetes. So in this journey, I invite all of you to join me and we will travel together, starting from uh, the discovery of insulin. So this is, uh, all of you remember this boy. So this is Leonard Thompson. And he's the first patient to receive insulin for type 1 diabetes. So before that, the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes used to be a death sentence. And there was a one treatment available, and that was the so-called starvation treatment. And uh, this is the first patient who received insulin, and that was in 1922. Novo syringe, that was launched in 1925. So this is the beginning of the use of technologies in diabetes. In the year 1963, you can see uh, Arnold Kadish over there. And uh, this is the concept. And uh, this concept has got both insulin and glucagon. And uh, this is the first insulin pump, but not for commercial use. And uh, this is the biostat. You can see that there is a girl with type 1 diabetes admitted in the hospital connected to that machine over there. And this uh, has got both intravenous sensing of glucose and intravenous insulin infusion. And this was commercially made available. And it was thought that this is going to completely close the loop, but it didn't, didn't happen. Because though this was possible within the hospital, the same findings couldn't be replicated in the free living environment. From Korea, in 1979, the Dana pump, still very popular with the newer models. However, the first historically documented insulin pump was from the US. And that was in the year 1983, the Minimet Phenol 2. And this was the beginning of a new era for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. You'll be surprised to note that insulin Pence reached the market years later, and that was in 1985. The first insulin pen was Novo Pen. And let me now travel with you. And this is the history of insulin pumps in India, which was launched in 2004 when we started using in our patients. In 2006, 2007, we started using the real-time insulin pumps in India. So the real-time insulin pumps were those pumps which could display the interstitial glucose values, which goes on changing once in every five minutes over the pump screen. I'm pretty sure that many of you have started using this in 2007. And by a radio frequency, this will get connected to the glucose sensor. And those were the sensor augmented pump therapies. It was a necessity, it was more of a legal necessity for doctors like me to publish a consensus guidelines on the use of insulin pumps in India. Why? Because many senior doctors started to criticize it. Why should you use these expensive gadgets for the treatment of diabetes? These are useless. So it was, it was a legal requirement to uh, publish these guidelines and disappear in one of the best technological journals, and that is Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics, and subsequently we published in our Indian uh, journal uh, for physicians as well. And after a couple of years, BO was launched in India. So BO was probably trying to close the loop by stopping the release of insulin when there is a hypoglycemia. And that was in 2012. But though it was one step ahead of the existing technologies, it stopped insulin only after the occurrence of an accident. And hence, we were still looking for completely closing the loop. In addition to the pump and the sensor, the control algorithm the proportional integral derivative, the model predictive control. Uh, the fussy logic, and all of them are still developing. And the first one to reach Asia was 640G, and uh, we called it the
the first gen artificial pancreas in 2015. And that was a real excitement. And many, many patients are still using this device, which is probably the best currently available in India, which could stop or eliminate hypoglycemia. And that was before the occurrence of hypoglycemia, at least 30 minutes before the occurrence of hypoglycemia, thereby eliminating most of the hypo episodes. 670G, which was FDA approved in 2016, is not available in our country. And this is the actual artificial pancreas, the first generation. And these are the examples of hybrid closed loop systems. So when you call it a hybrid, during the daytime, you had to bonus, but during the nighttime, even the base cell rates will get automatically changed based on your glucose value. So it is partly automated, especially during the night time. There is one more hybrid closed loop system available in the European market, and that is Diablo, now becoming widely available. So more and more patients are eagerly waiting for smaller pumps and tubeless pumps. In 2005, Omnipod was launched. And now you have the Omnipod Dash, and these are the ACE pumps, FD approved in 2019. And that makes sense. Patients are eagerly waiting for tubeless pumps, easy to use, with no strings attached. Because user friendliness is the key for acceptance of a device, the acceptance of a technology, without any hazards or headaches of connectivity. And this is another example, the Solo Micro Pump. Originally, it was a Medinco product approved by USFD in 2009. And now Roche has acquired it. And with the capabilities of even wirelessly connecting to the sensor such as Eversense. This is a terminology which we use the D dads, those dads who have patients with type 1 diabetes, the children with type 1 diabetes. So committed, not only to the children, but to the community at large. And this has actually inspired many others. And Damiano created this for his son, David with type 1 diabetes. And uh, this is the most recent generation of islet from Beta Bionics, which can house both insulin and glucagon within it. What are these ACE pumps? A stands for Alternate Controller Enabled Infusion Pump. So currently, many of our devices will not connect to another device. So if you would like to connect your insulin pump with another sensor, it will not connect. But with ACE pumps, it's capable of connecting with other devices, even if it is not compatible with automated insulin dosing systems, with continuous glucose monitors, and with other electronic devices. Even Medtronic has come up with ACE pumps. Let me now move to the history of evolution of glucose meters. Because uh, if I ask anybody with type 1 diabetes, most of you will tell me that glucose sensing is probably much more important than glucose infusion and devices. And this is AIMS reflectance meter, historically, the first glucose meter developed by Anton, and that was in 1970. And this is AIMS reflectance glucose meter, and this is from my own diabetes museum. I procured this glucose meter for my mother with type 2 diabetes, and that was in early 1990s. My father died of diabetes and its complications. And this is CGMS Gold, another landmark. And that was the beginning of continuous glucose monitoring system. The name of this device is now the terminology for the technology. And that was approved in 1999. And that was the beginning of continuous sensing the glucose. And this is again my own diabetes educator in 2006, we started using CGMS Gold in India. For a long time in India, we had only iPro2 as a continuous glucose sensor. 
But this was a game changer. I still remember March of 2015 when we started using Libre Pro in India as a user friendly sensor which doesn't require any calibration, which doesn't require any calibration. So this has emerged as one of the most user friendly sensors. Guardian kind of originally launched in 2018, and now in India, we have even the third generation sensor, fairly accurate. Real time sensors, but slightly more expensive. We have generated a lot of data from India on insulin pumps, on glucose sensors, continuous glucose monitoring systems, and its benefits in type 1 and in type 2 diabetes. In 2016, another landmark, the approval of Freestyle Libre, and that is a real-time sensing from Freestyle. And in 2018, the next-gen Libre 2 was approved. And these two devices are still not available in India. And Libre 2, in addition, has alarms and alerts in it. And in addition to NFC, it has got Bluetooth connectivity. I should be definitely mentioning on the Eversense Continuous Glucose Monitoring System. I know many of you are waiting for this, but it might not get launched in India very soon. This is the only implantable sensor, a very, very tiny sensor which can be kept underneath the skin. And this requires a small incision. And the technology is a different fluorescence technology. It gets connected to your mobile phone and other devices wirelessly. And this is described as a single sensor for all the seasons. It can last for even up to six months, the Eversense Excel. And now they are researching for a single sensor for one year. The glucose meters are also advanced. For the last four years, we have these connected glucose meters in the Indian market and in the global market. And these are capable via Bluetooth to connect to the mobile phones and even capable of remote monitoring at the physician's office. The example is a smart insulin pen. In pen, cleared by FDA in 2020, automatically capturing the insulin dosing data and keeping track on insulin on board. It prevents insulin stacking and apps are available for both Apple and for Android. Example of connected insulin pens, and this is NoPen 6, and this is NoPen Echo Plus for small kids, both NFC enabled, and these pens can connect to your NFC enabled mobile phone, to MySugar bundle, or to Diacent or to Gluco, and exchanging the data, thereby even creating an environment of an artificial pancreas with the help of algorithms in the phone. Last month, we published this paper, the evolution of insulin delivery devices. And this is the history of evolution during the last 100 years, from syringes to pumps to pens to... Sir, one minute left. Again, this is again the DIY artificial pancreas. And this is the timeline from discovery of insulin through the first hybrid closed river systems to the FDA approval of the tandem control IQ. And remember, you people, the community has launched the We Are Not Waiting movement in 2013. And the patients are pivotal. The patients are pivotal in the development of all these newer technologies. And this is Dick Bernstein. And Dick Bernstein was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 12. And he couldn't publish his findings. He could establish that his neuropathy and the retinopathy could be controlled with glucose monitoring and with the glucose meter. Eventually, at the age of 45 years, he joined the medical school to establish himself as a scientist to publish the papers. And in 1987, the American Diabetes Association accepted SMBG as a tool. So it took several decades for even the doctors to accept. So the patients have a pivotal role in rewriting the history. And another example will be the do-it-yourself artificial pancreas from patients. And this is Riley Link. And I am very proud. Congratulations to Jar Sethi. And she has established herself as one of the pioneers in India to use this technology 
almost demonstrating 90 to 95 percent time in range. And congratulations again to our leader from the south, who is leading from the south, Indu Thambi, and you people are really doing a great, great job. And you are rewriting the history of type 1 diabetes in India. Congratulations. Bye bye. Amazing. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, that was a lovely session. Um, I think we are now diagnosed jinka adult diagnosis hai hamare liye uh, it's actually a moment of gratefulness hai ki hum dekhe kahan se journey start hua tha in management of diabetes and where we've reached now so thank you very much i have a question that i would like to ask i saw that you spoke about the eversense and you spoke about the in pen um as somebody who's on mdi or uh, when do you think that something like this would be available in India? Because this truly would be a game changer for the people who are on MDIs. Very good question, uh, Shabi. And uh, uh, I should call it Shabi, right? Okay. Uh, 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 so these two are different entities. The in pen is a different entity, and uh, the connected pens is a yes. different entity. And the uh, connected pens, uh, Sanofi and Novartis, Nova Nordis, both of them are planning to launch in India very soon. Okay. And uh, they, they have collaborated with uh, the glucose sensing companies such as Medtronic and Abbott. Uh, and they have also collaboration with MySugar. So MySugar is now a property of Akuchuk. As you know, the co-founder of MySugar was a patient himself with type 1 diabetes and he lived with type 1 diabetes for more than 20 years. So MySugar can also hold an algorithm. So apart from the use of insulin pumps, when these uh, insulin pens have this NFC, and connect to a mobile phone with an algorithm. And they have the Bluetooth enabled cap, which can capture the CGM data from the CGM. And then all of these will go to the algorithm. And then that can uh, result in the algorithm or the phone instructing on how much insulin to be taken. Yeah. So it becomes a partly or a completely closed loop system. And that will actually uh, doesn't require, this doesn't require uh, the insulin pumps. Uh, but uh, I think the the most remarkable uh, discovery will be the use of APS, the artificial pancreatic systems and the uh, do-it-yourself because most of the currently available technologies will help only 70% time in range. But the one that is used by JAS and uh, the anecdotes, I think she is also going to publish uh, her experiences and uh, this is documenting more than 90%. Even ILET, that is only 70%. Uh, 780 G from Medtronic, again only 70 to 72 percent time in range. So this pens, if developed, it will be almost close to 80 percent. Amazing, super. Pooja, I know there are a lot of questions from the yeah. audience, then, but let's do that at the end of the panel discussion. Okay. Let's move on to our next speaker for now. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jodi. That was amazing, as always. Yeah, I'll be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Okay. So about Tim Street, uh, he uh, has lived with type 1 diabetes for a little over 30 years. Um, he recently got uh, involved in uh, the community that's called We Are Not Waiting. Uh, he's an advocate for uh, diabetes technology, especially DIY uh, closed looping systems. Uh, he writes in a blog and he tries different technologies out. He uh, uh, observes them, researches on them, and then comes in with his own perspective of, of, of what they are. And his attempts uh, are at making uh, understanding all of this simpler for people like me who may not be very technologically savvy. So thank you, Tim. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you very much for inviting me to this. Welcome. Let me just pull up the slideshow. Okay, so I've been asked to, by Jazz to speak about looping 101 and what is DIY diabetes. Now, before we roll forward into this, there's a little camera and the circle with a tick. So if you want to screenshot any of the slides, feel free to screenshot them and share them on social media. That is something that I always want to say is perfectly acceptable.
So just before we get going, just a few disclosures. I've been asked to speak about these types of technologies and topics at various events run by Diabetes Mine, BASD, Diabetes UK, um, and I've also been sponsored by the Nerd Scout Foundation to present a poster at ATTD this year. So starting with what is do it yourself? What is we are not waiting? Diabetes has always been do it yourself. You have to test your own blood, decide what dose of insulin to give yourself, decide when you should adjust insulin doses, decide when you might need to treat hypos. All of these types of things are decisions that are made by you in your own home or when you're out and about without the help of a healthcare professional. And the reality is that you only see a healthcare professional for a very tiny proportion of the time you live with diabetes. So in many ways, diabetes has always been do it yourself. Now, moving that into the realm of technology, do it yourself and we are not waiting came about as a result of parents in the US being desperate to be able to see what their children were doing when they were away from home and they had access to Dexcom G4 CGM, which they discovered would allow them to see the data in real time without them having to do any kind of decoding. So a gentleman called John Costick developed an uploader, um, which was then um, made publicly available and became known as Night Scout, which we'll move on to in a minute. Now, Costick's uploader was expanded by a couple of people, one who is Lane Desborough and the other who is Ross Naylor. Lane Desborough was one of the diabetic dads that um, was mentioned in the last presentation as somebody who has moved into the realm of trying to deliver a, an artificial pancreas commercially that is world leading. So do it yourself and we are not waiting come in multiple flavors and that starts with monitoring and reporting. It also looks at decision support and then we also have finally hybrid closed loops. Now before we talk about hybrid closed loops we need to look at the other two areas. So if we look at this, you can see that I'm talking about monitoring. And the, the idea is that we have data interoperability and the ability to see the data from any device anywhere. So what I'm showing you here are a range of the different solutions that have been put together by people using DIY technology. Initially, the core of this came from the use of Dexcom's continuous glucose monitoring devices. And this here, this box, that I'm covering over is Night Scout, which is a hosted monitoring solution that allows anybody to see your data, if you give them permission to, in real time, anywhere in the world. That data can also be seen on the mobile phone and on a watch whilst you're using it. So this stuff was available back in 2013, 2014, and it was what drove Dexcom to release their Dexcom share technology a little bit later when the Dexcom G5 came out and when Dexcom G4 was upgraded. What's also happened was that within Europe, when the Libre became available, some clever people put together the schematics for hardware that would allow a device to sit on the Libre and to read the Libre's data every five minutes and publish it to one of these phone devices. This is called Xtrip and this one's called Spike. This lives on an Android device. This lives on a, an Apple iPhone. So what we've got here are ways of collecting the data and publishing them to the web. And this has even been done with the Medtronic systems. Unfortunately, because of the way Medtronic communicates, you have to use the blood glucose testing meter that comes with a 640G, but you can have it running alongside your 640G and publishing that data to Night Scout to allow even 640G users to have their children fully monitored at, um, when they're at school, for example. Alongside that, you have Night Scout reporting, which gives you the, all the data you need to review what's happening with your glucose levels over a period of a week to the last three months, which just happens to coincide with the estimated time that an HbA1c looks back over. So it gives you the full set of data available and the ability to understand what's going on with your diabetes. Then we have decision support tools. So 
What does this mean? Well, the DIY decision support tools allow you to take into account real insulin duration of insulin action curves rather than linear, cur linear curves that most of the pumps and bolus calculators have historically used. They predict future glucose levels based on the bolus information and the carbohydrate information you give them. And there are also tools to run that will allow you to generate an estimate of what your basal insulin should be. And that can be used both with a, by a pump user, but also it can be used by an MDI user with the basal insulin. And there are mechanisms for doing that and instructions on the web to help you do it. Now, this is only as good as the data you give it. So if you don't tell it the right insulin doses or you don't tell it the right carbohydrate, it's not going to give you a very good result because it's not artificial intelligence and it's not machine learning, but it does make life easier. And you, if you want to, you can use this platform, which is Android APS, which is actually one of the hybrid closed loops that we're going to talk about in a minute, which will suggest if you're using a pump, what you should adjust your basal insulin to, to maintain your target glucose levels. Again, these are all parts and within the technology that the DIY community, the We Are Not Waiting community has put together. And that is something that we are working very hard to continue to maintain. But the key focus of this is looping. So what is looping? So this is the definition that I like to use. To loop. The present participle of to loop is looping to use an automated insulin delivery system to maintain optimal glucose levels. Optimal glu an automated insulin delivery system, so what's that? Well, we've already had a conversation earlier with um, Jyoti Dev, who mentioned that this is the artificial pancreas, or hybrid closed loop. And what does hybrid closed loop actually mean? Hybrid closed loop means that it can maintain glucose levels using basal adjustment, or maybe some bolus additional bolus insulin. But the key point here is that it does require user intervention, generally around meal times, in order to maintain good glucose levels, because the introduction of meals and the speed at which insulin acts results in things not necessarily being fully automated, because insulin is still fundamentally slow. And just referring back to the image that was presented earlier, you have a glucose sensor, you have a control algorithm, and you have an insulin pump, and the three of those things together monitor the glucose levels to try and make sure that the right amount of insulin is being delivered at the right time to try and maintain glucose levels. Now, there are commercially available systems and there are DIY systems. A brief overview of the current commercially available systems globally are Tandem's Control IQ, Medtronic's 670G and 780G, which has now been approved in Europe. Uh, Diaboloop, as was mentioned earlier, and also CAM APS, which is another system that is available and has a CE mark in Europe. But we're looking here specifically at the we are not waiting type technologies. And the current DIY closed loop systems, there are three. Now, you already know that Jazz uses EOS Loop, and that currently runs with both Omnipods and Minimed pumps, Minimed pump via the Riley link. It can receive glucose data from the Freestyle Libre, Dexcom G4, and the Dexcom G5 and 6. It runs on your iPhone, it's got a beautiful interface, and it, it works. That's the key thing. You then have Android APS and Open APS. This is Android APS, this is Open APS. Open APS was the very first of these systems. It was developed by Dana Lewis and Scott Lybrand back in 2014, 2015, and was first made available to people to download and use in 2015. Why is that important? Well, the first of the commercially available systems didn't become available until 2018. And it was their development work and their work with the FDA that drove the ability of the commercial manufacturers to actually get something out to market and do it more quickly than they perhaps might have done in the past. Open APS works on a variety of hardware. Um, I use it on what's known as an Edison chip, which sits externally to the pump and to a phone and runs the algorithm. 
Um, it can receive data from multiple different data sources, and it's probably the most advanced of the algorithms that are out there at the moment. Because it's written in Python and JavaScript, you can jump into it and change it to yourself. So if you want to adjust things within it, you have the ability to do that. I wouldn't say that you should do it unless you know what you're doing, but it does give you the flexibility to do some of those things quite easily. If we move it on to Android APS, this is an implementation of the open APS algorithm running on an Android phone. This is the most extensible of the three DIY systems that are available out there, or open source is probably the better term to use here. Um, Android APS is able to run with multiple different CGM systems. That's got Freestyle Libre. I should also mention Freestyle Libre 2 works with it. The Dexcom G4, Dexcom G5 and 6, Eversense. Um, anything that XTRIP, which is one of the earlier pieces of software we mentioned in monitoring, um, can read, can be fed through to Android APS. It also works with multiple different pumps. This image doesn't have the Omnipod or the Minimed pumps on it, but those also are either in testing or work with Android APS, as well as the Roche AccuCheck Spirit Combo, the Dana RS and the AccuCheck Insight. So you've got these three different systems, all of which do exactly as was described earlier, which is they monitor the CGM data and then they adjust the amount of insulin they deliver in order to make, try and make sure that you maintain your target levels. One, one, question, one question that we're always asked is, are they safe? And recently there was a study published by a number of people, you can see the reference at the bottom, that shows a comparison of the DIY systems with a sensor augmented pump. And the key takeaway from this is that the DIY APS systems show less hyperglycemia or roughly the same amount of hyperglycemia, better time in range, reduced hyperglycemia and reduced severe hyperglycemia compared to a sensor augmented pump such as the 640G. And that is really crucial data. What it's showing you is there are, it's no worse in terms of hypoglycemic events. The mean sensor glucose level is better and that the overall, the outcomes for a person using one of these things are equally as safe as a sensor augmented pump. And overall, you have a better mean glucose level. So DIY systems are out there, they're available. You can find more data on diabetic.com. It's a good source of data. There's a, a guide to getting started with DIY looping there. And they are safe. That's the key message from these last two slides. This is a set of useful links that's available for anybody who wants it. I'll leave it there for 10 seconds to allow people to screenshot it if they want to. And then we'll move on to Thank you and any questions, but as I understand it, we won't be asking too many questions yet. We'll wait to the end of the session. No, we did have a couple of questions for you, Tim. Do we have time okay. to ask them? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so the first question that came in for you was, um, is there an age uh, requirement to begin looping? Can it be done for a toddler, say? So we have people looping on DIY systems from as young as six months old. They are not, they don't have a requirement. Obviously you have to take into account the fact that this is a DIY system. You are responsible for who you use it with and what you use it on. But we have seen people using it from young children, very young children, all the way through to adults in their seventies and eighties. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shavi, um, is there any other question? No. Um, There's a rapid fire, which we could maybe do later, or we could do it now if you want. Yeah, let's do the rapid fire. Is yeah. something fun, Tim? You have to be really quick, okay? <laughs> right? Okay. So, Tim, quick answers. Number one, after checking your blood sugar, I don't know if you used a glucometer, but when you did, um, did you lick your fingers or wipe it clean? <laughs> Always lick. 
that's the way it should be. Um, fill in the blanks, please. I last changed my lancet on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> uh, never have I ever dash as a diabetic. I actually don't know an answer to that one. Um, Forgot to bolus? Did you ever forget to bolus? Um, yeah, but I've got open APS catching my back, so I don't ever need to worry about it. <laughs> that, that was it. Uh, I think before uh, so you we like move on, yeah, before we move on uh, quickly for our viewers in Hindi, um, thank you, Tim. Um, as somebody on MDI, this was a great session for me to begin with uh, to understand what looping is. Um, uh, Tim ne hame ye bataya ke uh, kis tarah se hum apne doctor se bahut kam duration ke liye milte hain aur jab hum milte hain, hamare paas bahut hi scattered data hota hai. To manage our diabetes better, ये हमारे लिए बहुत important है कि हम लोग अपनी diabetes management को अपने हाथ में लें। So ये जो hashtags हैं, we are not waiting, do it yourself। ये इसीलिए है क्योंकि हम मानते हैं कि looping एक ऐसा system है, which will help us हम लोगों को मदद करेगा अपनी diabetes management better करने में ourselves। So thank you Tim. Uh, and I would just like to add over there that for any people who have just begun looping, Diabet Tech, his blog, is an amazing resource. In fact, when I started looping, I bothered Tim quite a lot initially. And he was a great, great help. So check out his blog if you're interested in looping. And over to the next speaker. Thank you. So thanks, Tim. And our next speaker is Nupur. Nupur Lalwani. Uh, is the founder of Blue Circle Diabetes Foundation. She is a certified diabetes educator uh, and an insulin pump trainer. Uh, she's had type 1 diabetes uh, for the past 25 years. Uh, she likes running, writing, and gardening. I like two of these three things. <laughs> the first can we hear from you, please? Hi, Pooja. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi, Chavi, and a uh, big hello and a big thank you to Diabesties and the whole uh, organizing team for doing this. It's a wonderful uh, platform for all type 1s from across the world to come together. So thank you for having me here. You're, you're welcome and welcome to the conference. Thank you. So um, may I begin? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So I'm going to talk about India Tech. And I'm going to get my slide on in just a second. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, Nupur's topic now, because a lot of what we just spoke about with Dr. Jyoti and Tim, those things are not available in India. So I think Nupur's uh, slides over here are just going to give you an amazing insight into what you can do with what's available. So Nupur, all yours. Thanks, Jez. So I think uh, Dr. Jyotidev and Tim have set the ground beautifully for uh, diabetes technology um, across the world. And like Jazz mentioned, I'm going to get into the specifics of uh, diabetes tech in India. Um, now, Pooja very kindly introduced me. Um, so I've been type 1 for 25 years. And uh, for almost 20 of those years, I was on old school syringes and uh, glucometer. And I, I mean, ignorance is bliss, right? So um, I was very happy, um, you know, living under my happy little rock. Um, so when you talk about diabetes tech in the Indian scene, um, these are a couple of words that come to mind first. What is the expense? Um, so for those of you who may not be aware, uh, there is no insurance um, in India and uh, we have to pay out of pocket for um, all medical supplies and insulin. So that's the first thing that comes in the average person's mind is how much is it going to set me back by? Then the second thing could be, you know, hey, I know it's useful. My doctor tells me it's a great tool, but, you know, um, it's a different feeling talking to somebody who uses a pump versus somebody advising you, right? So that's where our lived experiences come into play. Um, well, also, it's a pretty cool thing. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. I love showing off my devices. So I'm on a pump and uh, the Libre Pro, which is available here in India. And I'm more than happy to, um, you know, show off my bionic parts. 
um you know having said that a lot of people are also um like apurva mentioned uh, there is a stigma around diabetes in india and a lot of people are not open to um you know talking about it if if somebody if your colleagues don't know you're diabetic you're obviously not going to be comfortable showing off your pump or your libre or your cgm right so there's that um aspect to it as well people may not be very comfortable um showing it off and you know when you're on pens and when you're on syringes uh it, it's totally cool because um you know you can just take your shot and it's just a few seconds um of time at which you remember that you're a diabetic and after that well no one knows again you're back to the anonymity of being you know maybe a non diabetic so um and and also you know sometimes technology overwhelms most of us uh there's a small section of people that really enjoy their tech but for the large section of society and i'm and i'm talking exclusively about people whom i've met and interacted with here in india uh even if they're from cities and uh, metro areas it technology can still get overwhelming it can it can get a lot um so you know when when i started using the pump uh the first few days were a blur i didn't even realize what's going on and maybe this is too much and you know stuff like that so what do we do when things get a uh, little tricky the good old indian jugaad now um for those who may not know jugaad is a word now recognized by the oxford dictionary it's a flexible approach to problem solving flexible meaning thoda chalo jugaad kar lete hain you know let's let's find a let's find a hack let's find a good in between way to fix problems and problems are always a plenty and i don't mean that in a bad way it's a good thing we have problems because then that gets us to think and that gets us to really get our gray cells working and and find solutions so um you know i had to do my own jugaad like i'm sure you all do every single day living with type 1 diabetes so i'm going to tell you what i did um so I've been using like I told you um glucometer and syringes for the first 20 years of me being a diabetic um and eventually you know I I realized that hey there's something called the CGM I looked it up on the internet I began to do my research um a lot of the CGM options so the the two CGM options available in India are Medtronic and uh, Dexcom I think the G4 is available uh, here in India and um both of these you know i mean quite frankly are are an added expense that you know you'd have to consider while you make your monthly budget for diabetes so i wasn't too comfortable starting with it right away uh, but then came the libre um so like dr jyoti dev reminded us in 2015 it came into india and and pretty quickly i um, you know got a trial done and i used it a couple of times and and i felt like you know my eyes just opened i mean i felt like uh, even though i was testing i mean i i can't really give you an average of how many times a day i've tested over the last 25 years but let's say when i was really into my diabetes management and i wasn't really um you know burnt out or i was i was really focused even at that time i would test maybe 8 to 12 times a day on the glucometer now i'm going to do a quick um analysis here on the screen to tell you why you should be using cgm um like dr sheetal mentioned as well if you can afford it it's a great investment and it's something that gives you a lot of data and you know if you're a type 1 diabetic you better start understanding and playing around with your own data because that's the only thing that's going to that's going to help you in the day to day fine tuning of your diabetes um so I've taken the average cost of a glucose test strip in India as 16 rupees. I mean, I could be wrong here, um, but I've seen strips as cheap as um, you know seven and eight rupees, and I've seen them as expensive as 25 rupees a strip. So let's say um, an average strip costs you 16 rupees. You test maybe seven times a day on an average. Maybe you you know you uh, you have to throw a strip sometimes, or or there's an error. so you're spending 112 rupees every single day and in a month you're spending 3360 rupees now let's compare that with using the libre pro the libre pro um you know it retails at 2000 rupees um a lot of us who are connected with our local diabetes communities we also get the libre pro at a discounted rate so 
i'm i'm keeping the mrp here so that you know just in case you you don't have access to uh, maybe a, a little bit of the discount which is available even then your monthly expense with the libre pro is 4000 rupees that's almost the same okay now see the difference your bg readings per day on a glucometer are 7 and that's assuming you do 7 i mean hand on your heart uh tell me how many of you guys actually check your blood sugar seven times a day i've gone through a phase where i wouldn't check my uh blood sugar even once in the day i mean you know growing up as a person with diabetes my uh, you know through the teenage years when my mom would ask me hey have you checked your sugars i would say yeah sure cool i wouldn't check and i'm sure a lot of people can relate to that because we've all um well at least the ones of the ones who got diagnosed as kids uh, we've all gone through phases where we've not checked our blood sugar as much as we should have um so let's say you do seven tests a day you still get 210 readings a month okay and compare that to the libre um you get 96 readings a day and you get almost 3000 readings a month if you break down the cost analysis it comes down to 16 rupees per strip for your glucometer and it comes down to 1 rupee 1 and a half rupee actually for the libre so um you know you don't need to be really smart at math to understand um which one is a better option so this was one of the um you know factors that got me to switch to using um the libre pro so um you know i had got my um libre pro i was using it for a couple of years and then um there are certain devices available in the market now where um you can convert your fgm so the libre as you guys know is a flash glucose monitor you can convert it into a cgm uh, which is a continuous glucose monitor and um i mean no prizes for guessing it it always helps to have more data so a continuous glucose monitor if you can get your hands on it is probably a better choice than it than an fgm i mean they all have their pros and cons but wouldn't it be nice to know if your blood sugar is trending down and maybe get an alarm so that's what a cgm does um so i mean there are devices like the blucon there's uh, meow meow so i decided to go ahead and explore the meow meow uh now up until some time ago the meow meow has two versions by the way version 1 uh, used to not work with the libre pro i believe that's changed now and you know it, it also works but i decided to um, try out the meow meow 2 and um, you know i um, while speaking to the company i realized that um, well people aren't using this product here in india and um, they have no clue i told them that hey listen we are a country of uh, billions of people and there are so many of us who are type 1 or you know even type 2s who might want to use uh, cgm so why don't you have something that's compatible with the libre pro as well and um, so in the last over the last year or so um you know they've come up with the meow meow 2 and uh, they asked me to test it and i've been really really happy with my experience using the meow meow 2 so for those of you who might feel like this is already too much information um i'm going to break it down for you the meow meow is an additional device so you got your libre on your arm and your libre pro and then you you put you put the meow meow on top of it so you're basically wearing two devices you stick these two with tape together or an arm band or whatever works for you and um through bluetooth this basically gets converted your fgm gets converted into a cgm so i can now see my blood sugars continuously without scanning them on my phone you know so if i'm if i'm going hypo or hyper or um you know whether i'm steady i don't need to scan anymore i can just look at my phone and boom there it is in fact as we speak um i notice i am at 117 well that's the power of technology i mean um wouldn't it be great to know your blood sugars all the time you don't need to um check with a glucometer so this is a great tool and um you know if you get the opportunity and if you feel like you can um manage it i would strongly recommend um using a cgm option or at least a libre pro all right so here's something i am uh, very proud about um 
there are five people in the photograph that you see. Um, the first four in the neon green t-shirts, um, these guys, uh, one of them is me. We walked a hundred kilometers at the Oxfam trail walker. Uh, this was about six months ago and it happened in a place called Karjat in Maharashtra in India. Um, the fifth guy, he's also uh, participating in the conference today. His name is Rohan. He was our crew member. He was the only T1 crew member that we had. So none of us had ever walked 100 kilometers. I mean, it was a crazy idea. Who walks 100 kilometers, right? You've got to be like really nuts. Um, but then I guess there is a little nuttiness in all of us. So, um, so we participated. We called ourselves a team walking on insulin. And why I'm telling you this in a you know, in a section, in a segment about tech is because we harness the power of technology to be able to check our blood sugars and to be able to share those readings with people who care for us. Uh, what you see on the left is a screenshot of uh, a very cool um, little, um, you know, temporary site that we set up. And um, all of us, by the way, we, we, if you notice, we're all trying to show off our uh, Libres. So I was using the Meow Meow at that point, and the other four friends were using the Libre Pro. Um, so what would basically happen is every few kilometers that we walked, um, our friends and family and people across social media and everybody who is following us on that link, uh, the screenshot of which you uh, the screenshot of which you see on the side, they could see our blood sugars. Now mine would get updated automatically because I was using um, a Jugard CGM. Uh, with the others, each time they scanned, their blood sugars would reflect on that screen. So people were looking at us, they were cheering us on, and they were basically, I mean, it was so overwhelming and it was so... Um, it was so wonderful. You know, at one point, I remember uh, one of us got a hypo and I mean, it's natural, right? We're type ones, we're not uh, non-diabetic. So one of us had a hypo and we received a flurry of messages and calls from people who were concerned. Hey, have you fed him something? Hey, have you guys given him glucose? Are you guys okay? Are you fine? And that's when we realized the power of technology and the power of a community. When these two come together, it's pure magic. There is there are no words, uh, you know, I mean, I think it, the thing explains itself. It was a beautiful moment when we finished. I mean, we're not athletes by any measure, but the whole essence of this conference and each one, all of us that have been saying the same thing, people with type one can do whatever they set their heart to. We set our heart to walking 100 kilometers. We've never walked 100 kilometers before and we did it. We may not have been the first team. Heck, we were close to being the last team, I have to be honest. But um, we had a wonderful experience because we had the support of, um, of everybody who cheered us on through Facebook and Instagram. And uh, while we were walking, we had team members who were updating all of this information on social media and sharing it with the world. So um, technology can be a beautiful thing. It needn't be overwhelming. It needn't be scary. And you know, most importantly, it needn't be expensive because you know, we, we talk about all of this stuff. Hey, tech is amazing. It's so cool. But it all comes down to, can I afford it? Is it sustainable? And that got us thinking. And so I'm going to move on to my next slide. And um, I'm going to tell you about what we did after this, uh, this 100 kilometer walk. Two minutes uh, left. Thank you. Um, so what we basically did is a bunch of us type ones got together. Um, we've now... Uh, you know, the combined experience of maybe like seven or eight type one diabetics is over a hundred years. Uh, we put our heads together. We thought about, hey, what's missing? Um, you know, let's let's come on, let's build an app for people with diabetes and something that people can relate to and understand in the Indian context as well. So we've been using all of these apps that are there in the app, you know, in the app store and the play store. We've been using my sugar and, you know, all of that other stuff. Um, so we came down, we sat down, we made a bunch of things that we made a bunch of points that were missing in other apps. We put our heads together and uh, here we've got the Blue Circle Diabetes app. So basically, um, I'm going to jump to the coolest feature really quickly. So the coolest feature, in my opinion, is the follow feature. Now, a lot of you guys, um, I mean, a lot of us based in India, we use the Libre Pro with Glimp. And, um, you know, that's how we check our blood sugars in real time because the, Lib because the Libre Pro reader only shows you graphs. 
now you know it takes a whole lot of time understanding which phones work which phones don't work i mean we we literally had to set up a helpline you know for questions like these we wrote blogs we made videos but still the questions were endless so what the blue circle app does is you can basically sync your glimp and your blue circle app and sitting here right now i'm in another city my mom's in another city but she can see my blood sugars she knows i'm talking today she can see and she knows my blood sugars are you know whatever 117 right now so that's the beauty of technology i would have never imagined like you know ruchika was mentioning back in the days when uh, you know you would check your sugars with the benedict solution we've come a long way we have to acknowledge it and we have to celebrate it um so that's one thing you can do is add followers and you know for people who are using the meow meow um you know you can literally if your kid goes to school and you're using the meow meow and the blue circle app with tomato you get real time alerts for 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 you know how much the sugars are at that point in time which i think is really really useful and practical um and also not expensive i mean obviously the app is free and uh, the libre and the meow meow are relatively cheaper options than you know the other cgm options right now uh, apart from this you can also generate reports you know look at your um, sensitivity factor your carb ratio um you also get another cool thing is you also get reminders to check your uh, bg so sometimes you forget and if you're on a, on a glucometer we haven't forgotten the people that still use glucometers we're not pretending like everyone uses a cgm because the fact is everyone doesn't most of us actually use glucometers so for for folks using the glucometer you once you enter your food and insulin uh in the app two But hours later yeah uh, yeah two hours later it gives you a reminder to uh you know check your bg and sometimes a reminder is all we need you know your mom's not going to run behind you everywhere and say hey have you checked your blood sugar so uh you know let let technology be uh your mom for a bit and um, and apart from this you can also log your food insulin exercise um blood sugar all of that so i think for anyone who's worried about you know who thinks that they want to get involved and and use technology to better help their diabetes it's um, obviously i mean through all the previous presenters as well you know it's possible and you know you can do it and i'm here to tell you additionally that it it's not going to break the bank if you can afford a libre pro um you should get it so i think that i should stop here because i can keep chattering on and um I think time's also up and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you Rumpur that was lovely. Um mostly because um ye ek myth hai ki India ke andar um, aap technology ko use karke you cannot get better at your diabetes management. So um जस्ट फॉर एवरीबडी एल्स जो हमारे व्यूअर्स है कि अनुपुर ने हमको बहुत ब्रीफली बताया कि जितना कुछ टिम ने या डॉक्टर ज्योति ने पहले बोला बहुत टेक्नोलॉजी अवेलेबल है लेकिन इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट में वो चीज़ कैसे रेलिवेंट है और आप कैसे बहुत कॉस्ट इफेक्टिवली कर सकते हैं मैनेज टू गेट द टेक इन इंडिया सो थैंक यू अनुपुर and i would just like to add on to say that i think blue circle is now a part of the we are not waiting movement so to say absolutely yes, you are creating absolutely. you know diabetics who are creating their apps and stuff so um yeah. that's it's amazing to have an indian representation in the we are not waiting movement so could i just have one question for you nupur um you spoken very extensively about cgms fgms and everything um how uh, do you suggest that somebody who is not on a pump because you very uh, nicely also advocate that pump has made life better for you uh, but at the same time ye bhi ek sachai hai ki bahut log yahan pe nahi afford kar sakte hain pump bhi so then how do you suggest that somebody on mdi can utilize the technology best for themselves You know, Chavi. Um, someone a couple of years ago, somebody asked me, "Uh, what would you pick if you had to pick between a pump and a CGM?" And at that point, I said a pump. But I, I want to change that. And um, since the last a uh, year or two, I truly believe that if you could pick between a pump and a CGM, as a person living with type one diabetes, my advice would be go for the CGM first. Um, so even if you're on MDI, that's that's absolutely cool. it's very important to know your data know your blood sugars it's even more important than the delivery system so um mm. like dr sheetal said i think cgm if you can afford it that's the way to go so thanks for uh, thank you 
can we go on to the next speaker we're really running short on time so also shekhar i would request you to please be very as tight as you can thank yeah. you nupur yeah. you told us so much i didn't even know jugad the word was accepted by uh, the oxford dictionary <laughs> but uh, anyway about shekhar uh, could we have the uh, introductory slide please yeah uh shekhar is 30 years old he's been type 1 diabetic for the past 19 years uh, for the past 19 years um what's remarkable or i don't know if remarkable is remarkable is that he underwent a kidney and pancreas transplant and he's going to tell us a little more about that just now he's also an mba in finance something tells me you're very good at carb counting shekhar honestly speaking mba in finance was just for the degree purpose <laughs> okay fair enough trust me एक दिन पहले एग्जाम पे पढ़ाई करता था जाता था लिख के आता था एंड डिग्री आ गई सी नॉट एवरीवन कैन डू दैट हां शेखर I was a type one diabetic for a good nineteen years, uh, thanks to diabetes and all the organizing committee for giving this opportunity. And uh, I would like to tell you all one thing: please, please control your sugar levels because once you know my story now, then you will realize why I am saying this. Okay, so in the year nineteen ninety seven, I was diagnosed with type one diabetic. I was in diabetic coma for three days when I was diagnosed, and after coming out, uh, whenever I met any doctor, he used to tell me, "Sugar, sugar control, sir. No, it's kidney fail. Sugar, sugar control, sir. No, it's kidney fail." So, I don't know. Something hit my mind that some day or the other, my kidney is going to fail, and uh, for the good nineteen years. Because it's after next when you want to. change the slide yes 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 sure sure so for the good 19 years uh, i won't be proud by saying this but my blood sugar levels were too bad i was like when i used to go to my doctor my sugar used to be 750 and i was standing straight i like shaker are you okay I'm like yeah okay kya karna hai abhi bata do and one fine day things went bad 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 one fine day in after 19 years i did a blood test as he randomly i went for a blood test and the doctor is asking me shikhar how have you come to the clinic i told me i have come on my two wheeler so what's what's wrong coming on a two wheeler is like shikhar your blood pressure is 220 by 120 do you know what does this mean i like no like shikhar something is wrong in your body trust me i like nothing is wrong क्या करना है टेस्ट वो बता दो एंड टेस्ट एंड फाइनली आई केम टू रियलाइज के माई क्रेटे नाइन इज टू पॉइंट टू विच वॉज टिल ओके इट हैड लेड टू अ डैमेज इन किडनी बट इट वॉज स्टिल ओके देन वेन आई मेट माई नेफ्रोलॉजिस्ट हु इज डॉक्टर अभय सदरे हिज द रिनाउंड डॉक्टर इन पुणे so and uh, luckily he's my dad's best friend so dad called him up ke shekhar ka aise aise hai i want to meet you so i and my dad went to him he like shekhar can you please wait outside after seeing the reports i like doctor kya hai bata do kidney kharab ho gaya hai bata do aur kitne time mein dialysis bhi karna wo bata do he was so shocked hearing to me he like jo bhi hai age 26 hai i can take it everything to tell me jo bhi hai so then finally he told my dad ke still i was kept outside the cabin he told my dad ke shikhar has only one year to go on a dialysis and from childhood i used to fear dialysis because one of my relatives was already going through a dialysis thing for the past 14 years and i was seeing her dying day, daily daily so i had that fear ke one day i'll be dying like this but theek hai so 
one fine day i still remember next slide please class yes. next hmm. so one fine day uh, i was supposed to go out with my friends uh, or just a chill out so i something came in my mind and i didn't go with my friends and that night around 12 o'clock i was admitted to the hospital and uh, my nephrologist came and he said shikar uh, sorry but we need to do your dialysis so at that time they had put a catheter by which they can could do my dialysis immediately after a good 4 5 hours so they started with the dialysis in march 2015 i still remember that date and after a 5 days in the hospital i was discharged and then immediately i had to do an iv fistula and i on the left side you can see a small surgery done on the left hand side on my left hand so this is my real pic of my hand so the iv fistula is one thing in which your artery and your vein is connected so that uh, your dialysis can be done from your hand there is no need for a catheter because a catheter lasts only for a 3 months okay and every time there could be an infection so this is the best option you can do it and this takes a good 1.5 months to get matured and then you can do a dialysis on the right hand side you can see a patient uh, going through a dialysis and when you are on dialysis the dialysis time is for 4 hours and weekly thrice you have to do just to stay alive and after the dialysis session of 4 hours there is no energy left in your body so trust me it's a bad thing it's a really bad thing and when you are on a dialysis you have to drink fluids in form of tea coffee water green tea food fluids whatever is restricted to only 800 ml of water and at that time before going on a dialysis i used to consume not less than 8 to 10 liters of fluids per day so from 8 to 10 liters to just 800 ml so tough you can imagine and in summers it's i think there's some um uh, tech lagging yeah i thought it was just me <laughs> uh okay um I think there's some network problem. Yeah. You want to wait for a bit or move on? Uh, Shekhar, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, we you are stuck for us. Oh. Okay, wait. Let me check. No, no. I think Shekhar, uh, it's fine now. You can continue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Jackson, next slide, please. uh this is me with my mom side the dialysis center waiting for my turn to come and this picture was clicked in coaching i had visited coaching again for the transplant thing i was admitted there also because i had registered in coaching also so the pic is from there and uh, i still remember my mom crying when i used to go in the dialysis center for 4 hours my mom used to sit outside and cry for four hours seeing a son at the age of 26 suffering and going through a lot of pain and things of that kind because when you're on a dialysis when the dialysis session is going on sometimes you feel chills like you are sitting without clothes on a mountain everest or sometimes it's like you are sitting on some gas okay so it's so hot it's so hot so it's like extreme and uh, during one of the dialysis centers uh we came to know that there is some doctor in bangalore who could 
give me a kidney fast because in bangalore uh, there are n number of transplants done each day so the chances are more of getting me transplanted soon because when it asked in pune so it was waiting period of 7 years and i'm still i still can uh, okay. uh, say that case waiting on a dialysis for 7 years the patient cannot live more yeah. and yeah. i had to yeah. definitely go for a transplant so i visited bangalore pgs global hospital there i met dr anil so dr anil told me why do you only go for a kidney transplant go for a pancreas transplant also so like who will give me a pancreas is like a cadaver donor can definitely give you a pancreas also because only a cadaver donor can give you a kidney and a pancreas so this is how i came to know that we can definitely get a pancreas also and before registering the doctor told me shaker it is a very risky operation if the operation goes well you will be fit and fine if the operation goes something something goes wrong god forbid will be no more i was like doctor i want to go for the operation if i come out good if i know okay you can use my body for some research if you wish and my dad was shocked hearing this from me so he's like okay beta kar lete hain transplant koi badi baat nahi hai aise bhi transplant karna hi hai kidney ka pancreas bhi kar lete hain so in march 2000 16 uh one fine day i got a call ke shekhar uh, there's an organ for you i asked my surgeon i told him at that time ke i just have some deposit in the hospital i don't have rest of the money because it was a saturday evening sunday the banks are closed monday the money can be transferred he is like shekhar tu aa tujhe wo tension nahi lena ki paise kahan se aayenge so main hu surgeon ha main hu surgeon and your transplant will be done so this is how i went to bangalore from cochin and uh, for my transplant done uh, next slide please so this is the day 19th photo when i was discharged for the first time from the hospital fit and fine the surgery was successful everything was there so you can see a uh, picture with my dad my doctors the nursing staff the brother and everything on day 21 i was i had to visit hospital again and again i had to be admitted and i had some complications and that complications took me a good 51 days in the hospital and if every after every 5 days or 10 days there was one surgery to be done on me so on the fourth surgery i still remember ke my anesthesia doctor she came and told me she said this is the last operation for you and definitely i'm going to give you some anesthesia after the after you get out of the operation theater because you'll be in so much pain for 40 hours she gave me some some anesthesia which i don't know and i was in zero pain but after 40 hours she came to me and she like shaker now your suffering starts you have to bear the pain but every 6 hours they will give you some anesthesia if you have any pain but whenever they gave me an anesthesia to reduce the pain that anesthesia used to work only for half an hour and the rest 5 and a half hours i used to be in pain and trust me that pain is like killing pain so it's it's too bad it seems like a pancreas and a kidney transplant is good the life is good But going through that process, yes, yes. So going through that process is very difficult. Next slide, please. So after fifty-one days from the hospital, I went to home in Bangalore. Uh, my boa stays there, so I was staying with her for a good two months. And when I asked my doctor after sixty days, can I go to Pune? He said no, you cannot go. First, you have to roam the Bangalore city. so he he only suggest me shekhar banner gatta zoo zoology hai wahan pe tu ghum jayega crowding ho jayega and let me see if something goes wrong with you i like doctor rukiyo kya kuch wrong hone ke liye like tu ghum ke to aa fir apan baat karte hai so this is the picture 
after four months i visited the zoo and you know a good time with my family and you know and then i spoke to him then after that he gave me permission to go to pune next slide please this is when i was uh, back to pune so celebrating my new life with my family you can see my entire family they done some balloon decoration for me so which was good a new life hai papa se new born hai to unka hi decoration karenge they were like i think was there in their mind he is just starting his new life so next slide please i'll again tell you transplant is not a cure for diabetes it is the end solution trust me because if you get a organ it, you are not sure if the transplant will go successful or not because if i reconnect uh, one thing recollect one thing at one time just before my fourth surgery doctor had told me shekhar if anything goes wrong if i can't help you after the fourth surgery also we will have to remove your transplanted pancreas i was like okay whatever you think the best for me you can go ahead and do that for me and the package was for 12 lakhs but because of the complications i had to 35 lakh rupees so which is a huge cost and which everyone cannot afford and with me i can think i have 12 friends who undergone kidney and pancreas transplant going successful and one of the names is megala viji from mysore shakidi from bangalore Shikhar, I'm so pravin from bangalore off, but we are out of time i'm so sorry uh, no problem no. yeah uh, chavi no problem. would you like to um thank you shekhar uh, for sharing your story uh, yeah. main actually shekhar se pehle mili hui hu mujhe ye story pata hai to main sirf ek line mein ye bolungi ki jo shekhar ne end mein bola ki we are not trying to scare you hum ye nahi bolna cha rahe ki aap dar jaiye but take it as a wake up call agar aap apni diabetes dhang se manage nahi kar rahe hain so this is where the complications can lead you so please just be careful in your diabetes management thank you shekhar thank uh, you yeah pooja there are just a few questions that we can we have all the panelists please uh, up here amazing uh tim can you just turn on your video please all right we have a few questions and just just take, take whoever that answer ahead pooja um one common question that came across was uh, when will technologies like the Dexo, uh, dexcom g6 come to india dr jodhin i think would be the right person yeah. to answer this any answer hello hello yeah am i audible yeah, yeah you are audible uh, dexcom g6 uh, won't be launched in india very soon they are planning for another model of dexcom <coughs> which could be as accurate as g6 and also doesn't require a calibration and it, it has got a different name and uh, that they are planning for only in the developing countries and probably covid has delayed everything so they might launch a cost effective solution and there are two other companies also probably <coughs> launching uh, relatively inexpensive as nubur has said relatively inexpensive but accurate tools in india and that will take another 4 to 5 months there's a question i've got personally for tim actually um, does anyone explore using machine learning for these algorithms what is the state of the data set sharing for diabetic data Uh, two separate sets, um, questions there really um there are mechanisms set up to allow people who use DIY systems with night scout to upload their data to a shared data repository um and that can be used by anybody for any sort of big data investigations machine learning etc um has anybody done it at this stage there are a couple of people who have done their own projects to try and come up with um machine learning based solutions but nothing's been released as open source to the community to to actually use i think it's fair to say that there's not been a huge number of people with that skill set to enable it to become available um and once it does you still have to put it through and this is something that's true of all of the diy um artificial pancreas type technologies they go through a very thorough testing process so it goes into a development code it goes through 
testing um, off body, it goes through testing with expert users before it ever get, gets into a version that people are freely made available to use. So until somebody picks up and decides they want to do the machine learning piece, it won't get into that. So that's really what you're looking for. You need somebody to pick it up and start looking at it. I think Blue Circle will be the first people to do that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, the last question, I think I'm just going to, uh, whoever can answer it, I think we can do it like the least, exp uh, the question is the least expensive CGM. So let's do India and Europe as well. What is the least expensive CGM do we have in India? Uh, if, if by CGM they mean a true CGM, then probably uh, Medtronic. Medtronic. Um, if they mean the Jugard CGM, then the Libre Pro. The Libre Pro with the Mia Mia. Would you agree, Dr. Jyoti? Would it be the Medtronic GC? Uh, G I think the, uh, the cheapest, it's if expensive. the question is on the uh, cheapest CGM, it is uh, in all the countries, I think I will agree with Newport, it is a Libre, Libre and Libre Pro. So that is the cheapest. And uh, if you look at the MAR, the mean absolute related difference of these CGMs, which is related to the accuracy, the accuracy is so close now. So uh, when a Libre and a Libre Pro, if you look at the accuracy of Libre, it is close to nine. So it is almost close. So. We can use these cost-effective technologies rather than adapting for these expensive ones. And in the Europe, mm -hmm. uh, in UK, which would be the least expensive? Uh, so it depends on on how you define price. So the Libre is available relatively freely on the NHS. So if you get it through the NHS, you don't pay anything for it. Whereas getting something like Dexcom or Medtronic through the NHS is much more difficult. If you have to fund it yourself, there are a number of CGM systems available um, and one called Medtrum, um, which isn't the most accurate, but is, is available, um, is probably cheaper than or the same price and is true CGM compared to the Libre with uh, Meow Meow. Um, the most expensive by far is the Medtronic. Oh, really? <laughs> the other yeah. way around in India and in the UK. Amazing. Are, you, are you happy with Medtrum? Uh, is it I, don't, I think Metrum's rubbish, personally. Um, <laughs> I, I've tested it multiple times. Um, mm -hmm. The variation in MARD I've seen off it have been terrible um, when I've done an N equals 1 experiment on it. Having said that, if you use Libre with Meow Meow or Meow Meow 2, you also have to be quite careful because um, if you look at the data, and so I've done it N equals one a number of times, and over the first two days and the last three days of Libre using a Meow Meow, you do see a significant widening of the variation from blood testing compared to something like the Dexcom G6, which is actually much more consistent across the entire life of the sensor. So whilst I agree that Libre with Meow Meow is a great way to get into CGM, anybody who does so needs to understand the um, the risks associated with poorly calibrating it and seeing how that data works. And I have also experienced that Glimp is better than even Night Raider. Sorry? Glimp software, the Glimp, uh, it's more accurate than using a Night Raider. Uh, I tend to recommend Xtrip. Um, Xtrip's calibration algorithm is probably, well, they all come from the Xtrip calibration algorithm. So, Knight Rider, um, Glimp, Tomato, um, Spike, all originated from the code that was Xtrip in some shape or form, because that's open source. Um, the calibration algorithm is pretty consistent across all of them, but the most advanced is the one that's in Spike and in um, Xtrip. And I would always recommend using Xtrip or Spike as your um, software with Libre and Meow Meow. The only tiny issue that comes up, you know, Tim, here in India is uh, setting up Night Scout or X Drip becomes a bit of a hassle for the average person. I, I mean, I've set up my own Night Scout previously as well, and I see people struggling. I mean, I, I'm not, um, I don't have programming background either. And uh, so that that's the reason why uh, apps like Glimp are wildly popular here. Yeah, so I would recommend, so X Drip actually is just a download. You don't have to do any programming with it. But for Night Scout, there are, there are now some people putting together systems where you can pay for a Night Scout build out. So there's a one called t1dpal.com, which is run by Ben West, who was one of the people who was heavily involved in OpenAPS right at the start. 
and they built it on a service model where you go in, you sign in, you pay eleven dollars ninety nine a month, and they man they build it for you. You just upload your data to it. You can set up your um, URL information, and they maintain a service level as well, which you don't get with the full DIY systems. We're also seeing um, some other countries starting to look at whether government organisations or healthcare organisations can sponsor this type of thing. And I think there's an initiative like that in Finland as well. I don't want to take up too much time, but a quick question, Tim. I mean, this is just a personal question. What about the Night Scout licenses and stuff? Um, Sorry? I mean, what the Night Scout licenses? Can can anyone uh, sort of... Yeah, it's, um, it's the MIT, I think it's the MIT license it's done under. So it's a... Uh, fully open source, as long as you can make changes to it, you just have to reference that the, the origin of it. Got it. Okay, um, so a big thank you to all our panelists, Dr. Jyoti, Tim, Shekhar, Nupur, you guys were fantastic. A big thank you to our moderator, Chavi, and our chair, Pooja. It's been an amazing session for those who've been interested in technology. And uh, without, with that, I thank you all and Indu, please introduce the next symposium. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.